what are they going to do on when they when they find out that they've been so brainwashed and fooled? I mean, and how humiliating, how humiliating for these people. They're going to be mortified that they were so fooled and they were so dumb and they were so naive. And that's why we need to have compassion for these people, even though it's going to be tough because a lot of these people were really awful to us and were really mean to us and mocked us for trying to tell the truth. This is Liz Crokin, full-blown QAnoner, saying that you and I were really awful to her because she was spreading her QAnon beliefs all over, all over everything, and we're going to be mortified when we find out that she was right about QAnon all along. Poor Liz Crokin. I just want to give you an idea of who this person is because she just showed up at a, a conspiracy convention just the other day and spread her nutter buttery all over everything. It is a mess. So I want to give you an idea of some of the other things that she said, some of the predictions she's made, some of the beliefs that she holds leading up to this. Check this one out. Early August 2019, she went on the the MC Files is what it's called. Chris McDonald is the guy's name. He hosts all kinds of nutter butters. Check out what she had to say on there. Early August 2019. No one's going to be President Trump, number one. And the media continues to lie about his numbers. And he won by a much bigger margin than the media to this day is reporting. Okay. So let me just break this down. 2019, this is before the election took place about a year before the election the 2020 election takes place she says nobody's going to beat donald trump he is unbeatable as a presidential candidate because he's so loved and adored by everybody and the media is painting an inaccurate picture of how hated he is people actually love the guy and the media to this day is reporting um so, so that's number one number two I think this is all going to be a moot point because I think many of these candidates, if not all of them, will end up in jail before 2020. <laughs> many candidates will end up in jail before 2020. Wow. So she was making a prediction a year out that Biden and every other candidate that was running for president in 2020 originally, you know, Bernie Sanders and whoever else was running. I forget now. They are all going to be in jail before the 2020 election so it's not going to matter i'm sorry man look she's upset that we're mocking her don't say stupid <laughs> okay don't say things like this and you won't get mocked so <laughs> i'm not asking that. i'm serious so many of them are involved in crimes against humanity treason you know pay to play and mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. go on treason you say okay pay to play and unfortunately many of them are involved in child king so you know are any of these candidates going to be standing by next summer i truly wouldn't be surprised if none of them are standing absolutely nuts dude that was the q on way to make all kinds of claims about an oncoming storm is what they called it the storm and this storm was supposed to be this big event where the white hat military, as they call it, is going to come in and reveal themselves as the real leaders of the country because, you know, Trump apparently didn't win. Eventually down the line, the white hat military was going to install Trump as the leader, despite the fact that he lost the election. And they're going to set everything right. They're going to correct all of the wrongs and arrest all of the people that did bad things Joe Biden and Hillary Clinton and John Podesta and all the other people. And everything is going to work out in the end. Interestingly enough, the storm, as they call it, was actually supposed to be January 6th or vice versa. January 6th was supposed to be the storm, actually, and it failed miserably. It was, it's basically just a coup to take control of the U.S. government. They found out pretty quickly that they didn't have anywhere near as much support as they thought they did, and it all fell to pieces after that. QAnon didn't send another message after that for, like, years. Unfortunately, QAnon has come out of the woodwork once again.
it's revived who you know the person that claims to be the guy that leads QAnon, Q Clearance Patriots, what he calls himself, has come out of the woodwork and he's started posting messages again. Nonsensical garbage, of course. But you know the true believers like Liz Crokin and the praying medic by the fact that they never gave up on it. They never stopped believing for a second, even though Q Clearance Patriot didn't post anything to any online forums to keep the belief system alive for years up until recently. This one's mid-August 2022. I just want to give you an idea of who she is because she showed up at a conspiracy convention, if you remember. I want to talk about that in a second, but I want to give you a well-formed out idea of who Liz Crokin really is and what she believes. Before we watch it, let me explain adrenochrome, though. Um, Adrenochrome is oxygenated adrenaline, and it can be extracted pretty safely from the blood. Why would you? You wouldn't. There's no real purpose to it. QAnoners believe that it's used as a drug. It's not. You can buy it on eBay. Or I I don't know if uh, biological materials are allowed to be sold on eBay or not. But people have bought it on eBay. It's really not hard to access. Scientists are legally allowed to access adrenochrome. It's just a chemical. Oxygenated adrenaline. And it doesn't do anything for you except give you a headache, basically. If you want adrenaline... You can just get adrenaline through like an EpiPen or by other means. Like adrenaline is available to be purchased. Why would you want to use spent adrenaline? That's what it is. Oxygenated adrenaline. Anyway, she claims adrenochrome is a secret drug that elites use. And it has to be extracted from children who are still alive. It's just nonsense. All of it. None of it's true. It's all easily disproven. Anyway, uh, listen to this clip from Liz Crokin where she talks about adrenochrome. It's a core QAnon belief. That's why I mention it. The White Hats tainted the elite's adrenochrome supply with the coronavirus, and that's why so many members of the elites are getting the coronavirus, if indeed they do have the coronavirus. Wait, so she says she doesn't even know if they have the virus, but she's claiming that the White Hats tainted their supply with it what like literally nothing she said just now made any sense at all to a logical person to any person um so adrenochrome is a drug that the elites love it comes from children the drug is extracted from the pituitary gland adrenal gland is what she meant and somebody in the chat says are there any pros to it no there aren't there aren't any pros There are no benefits. There is no reason to ever take adrenochrome. Like I said, it's just a chemical that's used by scientists to study the way that adrenaline is processed through the body or whatever else. You you don't want to eat it. It gives you a headache. That's it. It is not used, nor has it ever been used, as a drug. It is not possible to use it as a drug because it's not a drug. It's just a chemical used in labs. That's it. The pituitary gland of tortured children. It's sold on the black market. It's the drug of the elites. It's their favorite drug. It is... No. Beyond evil. It's demonic. It is so sick. So there is a theory that the White Hats tainted their adrenochrome supply with the coronavirus... Using that word theory a little liberally there, isn't she? No, there is no theory, quote unquote, about this. Just completely made up. All of it. But she is a true believer. Liz Crokin will say and do absolutely anything to buy into what Trump and QAnon believers are selling. I'd be willing to bet she even bought Donald Trump's NFTs. I would bet anything she's one of the people who purchased those things. January 20th, 2021, this is Inauguration Day. So Biden is inaugurated on this day. And this is where the clip from the very beginning came from, was this video. She is faced with the reality now that she was wrong. She is forced to face the reality that Joe Biden is the president of the United States and Donald Trump is not. That directly contradicts her already existing beliefs in QAnon. We will all be vindicated. I know it. I bet. 
Totally. Very soon. You know, definitely within our lifetimes, but very soon. Any minute now. Before President Trump's presidency is over, we are living in biblical times. We are living in a time where God is exposing all evil. And, you know, I've been calling John Podesta up for almost two years straight now. And people. Okay. If you're unfamiliar with this whole belief with QAnon, Podesta was uh, Hillary Clinton's campaign manager, I believe. And he was victim of a spear phishing attack. It's like a, a, a hacking attack, basically, where somebody sends him an email to log into an account, his Apple account or his Android account, Google or whatever it happens to be. You sign into your account through this link and they say it's urgent. You have to sign up here now. So you click on the link in your email or your text or wherever you received this message and you enter your username and password, and it redirects you to Google's website or whatever. And then, uh, and then it prompts you to enter your information again. Kind of weird, doesn't really make any sense, but okay, you enter the information again. You're not seeing any evidence of this thing that it was saying you needed to resolve, so you just go on about your day. The website that you clicked originally in the email or the text or whatever was fake. It was modeled to look exactly like Gmail's website or Apple's website or whoever. And when you typed your email and password in, it went to the hacker's database. That is what happened. Russia, uh, this is proven unequivocally, by the by. Russia did a spear phishing attack on Hillary Clinton's campaign manager to get his email address and his password, and they succeeded. So Russia logs in, gets all of his email records, passes them to Julian Assange through WikiLeaks. Julian Assange releases them publicly. That's how all of this came to be. And Hillary's campaign manager's name was, wait for it, Podesta. Was it Anthony Podesta or John Podesta? Let me look. John Podesta was the campaign manager. I'm sorry, campaign chairman for the Clinton campaign in 2016. So yeah, John Podesta. And he has a brother named Anthony Podesta, I think, or a cousin or something. Anyway, so uh, WikiLeaks releases their email addresses and QAnon, I'm sorry, WikiLeaks releases their emails and QAnon sifts through the emails that Russia released to WikiLeaks and finds mention of a pizza parlor known as Comet Ping Pong Pizza, I believe. And they made something out of this. Like they read into this and believed that anytime pizza was mentioned, it was a secret symbol that like they were going to be taking these kids and like draining adrenochrome out of their bodies or some other complete garbage made up from absolutely nothing all of it and she bought it she ate it up hook line and sinker and spread it around as much as she possibly could for years and she wasn't just the she wasn't the only one either this is like a stochastic event that took place this wasn't an event where a single person was spreading disinformation about somebody. If that were the case, it would be possible to like sue them for defamation or something. But there were like a billion people, well, you know, a million people maybe, all over the place, spreading these ideas and beliefs and nonsense to everybody around them through like telegram channels and places that aren't monitored, places that you have to have invites to access. But there was like a pipeline to other people that believed similarly that all this stuff spread through. It was a full-blown stochastic terrorist event. So anyways, keep listening to what she had to say here. ...kinds of accusations, but the evidence is so undeniable, I have no problem doing it. And it you'll notice he hasn't threatened to sue me, and many people have called him a... No one's threatened. He hasn't threatened to sue anyone. I mean, Andrew Breitbart called him a... That's probably because they're all judgment-proof. He wouldn't get a penny out of them if he won. And even so, defamation is really hard to prove in America. But aside from all of that, saying anything about it at all would probably be a mistake for your public image. Like, a lot of this stuff is being spread through these weird little insular circles that exist in the dark web where no one else really has access but these weird little nutcases. And... 
you suing them would make it all public record and blow it out of the water. The press would get a hold of it and they'd spread it all over the place. The best idea is to let it sit in these insular little circles and stew and try to deal with it from a stochastic perspective. But all that being said, the fact that somebody is not suing somebody else is not evidence that something is true. That's ridiculous. Maybe he doesn't have the money that he needs. Do you ever think about that one? Maybe he's not as rich as you believe him to be or something. Like, there are a billion reasons for this. Oh, and by the way, she's a reporter. She's not a nobody. She started out as a reporter that had some level of credibility. And then she went down the QAnon pipeline. That's why people know who she is in the first place. She's actually pretty reputable, or was back then at least. Years ago, before they knocked him off, yeah. uh, you know, we're going to see John Podesta and his brother arrested. That, that annum- I, I would guess that announcement, without a doubt, will be made before the end of the, this year. You know, ooh, <laughs> oops, uh, just picked a whole bouquet of oopsie daisies there, didn't she? So uh, that was a year ago, and here we sit. Still waiting. I'm sorry. That was two years ago, actually. That's when the prediction was made. The prediction failed a year ago. So there's that. I Dude, I love it when they make predictions like that. I just eat it up. This year, you know, and, and, and all this stuff is going to be exposed and we'll, we'll all be vindicated and these rings will be totally broken up. The kids will be saved and it'll be glorious. I bet. I bet. Totally. What are you gonna, What are they going to do when, when, they, when they find out that they've been so brainwashed and fooled i mean and how she's talking about us what are we gonna do when we find out we were so suckered by the deep state humiliating how humiliating for these people that they're gonna be mortified that they were so fooled and they were so dumb and they were so naive absolutely so embarrassing that i didn't believe QAnon. right god i'm glad i dodged that bullet by buying into it early and that's why we need to have compassion for these people, even though it's going to be tough, because a lot of these people were really awful to us and were really mean to us and mocked us for trying to tell the truth. Yeah, absolutely. Trying to tell the truth is what she was doing, 100%. So that's Liz Crokin, reporter. I wanted to talk about what she had to say recently at the Reawaken America tour. This is a tour that took place at Greg Locke's church this time around. It's run by a guy named Clay Clark, complete conspiracy nut. If you're curious about some of the other people that have been there, I'm releasing some other stuff this week about the Reawaken America tour. Uh, Jim Brewer was there too, and he did this whole conspiratorial set. I think that video released two days ago, if you want to see it. Kind of interesting, I thought. Anyways, listen to what she had to say at Reawaken America tour, late January 2023. We have the power to demand that the law enforcement, FBI, the Department of Justice, that they look into Hillary Clinton and crimes against children. Are you kidding me? She's still going on about Hillary Clinton to this day, dude. 2023, okay? This stuff happened eight years ago. Eight years ago. She ran for for president. I'm sorry, seven years ago. Seven years ago, dude, she ran for president seven years ago. When are they going to move past Hillary, okay? I've got buttery mails stuck in my head 24-7 on repeat because that's all they talk about. Butter emails, butter emails. It's all about her emails. That's all they talk about, dude, is buttery mails 24-7. That's all that's on the brain is buttery mails. And it's still on their brain seven years later. I mean, I can't blame them, dude. I've had buttery mails on my brain since all this started, too. For what it's worth but it's not gonna happen unless we demand it so i encourage you all to get involved speak up expose this stuff talk about that laptop talk about anthony weiner's laptop as if these nutcases haven't been speaking up and screaming about all this stuff anyways this whole time. Uh, okay, t- context time. What she's referring to here with Anthony Weiner's laptop. Anthony Weiner was a congressman, I think, or a senator. I believe he's a congressman. Anthony Weiner, American former politician, served as U.S. representative for New York's 9th con- Congressional District from, from 1999 until his resignation in 2011. Oh, really? Was it 2011? I thought it was a lot more recent than that. Okay, so 
Let me tell you about the laptop she mentioned. Anthony Weiner famously was arrested, and I think he even went to jail for sending explicit images to people he shouldn't have been sending them to. I think girls who were right on the line of legal, and I think he even crossed that line into underage. He was sending explicit pictures to them, right? And he rightly got in a lot of trouble for that and rightly went to jail for that, to, to my knowledge. Well, according to QAnon, everything from here forward is complete nonsense and fabricated by the same people who showed up at in Dallas on the grassy knoll to wait for JFK Jr. to show up, a dude that's been dead since 1994, so that he could run with Donald Trump for president. Oh, you thought I was joking, didn't you? Look at all these QAnon shirts. No, I was dead serious. QAnoners actually stood on the grassy knoll and waited for a dead man to show up to run with Donald Trump for, vi like, run as his vice president or whatever. I'm not joking, okay? Those are the same people, okay? So everything that I say past this point is completely fabricated by those people. The story goes, according to QAnon, the cops showed up at Anthony Weiner's house to arrest him, and they found his laptop. Now, on that laptop was a video of Hillary Clinton and Anthony Weiner's wife, a.k.a. Huma Abedin, which is, I think, her I, uh, Hillary Clinton's secretary or something at one point. They were working together. So supposedly there's a video of Huma Abedin and Hillary Clinton on that laptop basically torturing this kid to get adrenochrome out of them, pretty much. And QAnon, I mean, this is completely made up, but QAnon got oddly specific with their claim, like disturbingly specific. To come up with a story like that, somebody's got to have a really depraved mind to have even thought of it in the first place. It was disgusting, some of the stuff that they described seeing in this video i mean it's completely made up all of it there's no reason to believe any of it but that's what anthony weiner's laptop is all about that's what she's talking about it is largely the basis for like the whole QAnon movement this is kind of how it got started QAnon was originally just one guy posting to social media to a 4chan account or whatever a 4chan board and the claim is that hillary clinton was about to be arrested for what was found on Anthony Weiner's laptop. Of course, she was never arrested. None of it's true. Like, literally nothing all the way down. It's all garbage. But they believed it anyways. So there's your context for what she just said. Let's keep listening. Close this stuff. Talk about that laptop. Talk about Anthony Weiner's laptop. Talk about the IG report. Okay, here's another one. The IAG, the uh, no, the OIG is actually what it is. The Office of the Inspector General report. I believe that this is a this is basically the Mueller report. QAnoners believed that Donald Trump was actually working with Robert Mueller to expose the deep state. That's really what the probe was about. I guess they couldn't handle the idea that somebody was in investigating Donald Trump in the first place. So QAnon just went completely nuts screaming about people releasing the OIG report. Well, when this started, it had already released, but they claimed that there was another secret, you know, report that was being hidden that they wanted released despite the fact that we already have it. Donald Trump wasn't working with Robert Mueller to expose the deep state, okay? Just where are their heads? Just where are their heads? It's just like an endless, bottomless pit of nonsense with these people. Talk about that laptop. Talk about Anthony Weiner's laptop. Talk about the IG report. Don't let people forget about it. If you want to see her locked up. Hillary, presumably. I don't think anybody cares anymore. Why do you still care? It's not going to happen if you don't do anything. So I encourage you all to get fired up, get involved, and don't stop fighting until that woman and all her associates get the justice that they deserve. People literally cheering for this, okay? That's right. Lock her up.
They are literally cheering lock her up, dude. It's 2023 and they are cheering lock her up right now. What the hell is happening? That is absolutely unhinged from reality. That's not where it stops, dude. She went to Mar-a-Lago, Donald Trump's house, okay? And she gave this long-winded, drawn-out speech about Pizzagate. Remember earlier I mentioned Anthony Podesta's, or John Podesta, I'm sorry, John Podesta's emails and how he was victim of a spear phishing attack and all that stuff? And, you know, they claimed that anytime he said the word pizza, he was talking about, like, boys or something like that, and he was trying to capture kids and blah, 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 whatever other thing. That's that's Pizzagate. That's what that is. They believed that in the basement of Comet Ping Pong Pizza Parlor, where the Podestas and the Clintons occasionally go to eat pizza and discuss things, they believed that in the basement... They had people captured and kidnapped and tied up and they were, I don't know, draining their adrenochrome to stay young or whatever other nonsense, like completely fabricated garbage. And they spread it so much that somebody actually showed up there and attacked the place to free these people that were like being held captive there. There is no basement in this pizza parlor. It was all made up, all of it. That's what Pizzagate is. I thought that this was proven unequivocally. But here we have Liz Crokin talking about Pizzagate and QAnon at Donald Trump's house, mid-December 2022. But it's also important to note that some of the top people working at Balenciaga were also openly promoting cannibalism, Satanic ritualistic abuse. Openly promoting? Like this is public? Like they were coming out there and saying, hey, I want to take part in ritual sacrifices or satanic rituals or whatever other nonsense? I don't remember this. Where the hell was I? This is something I'd be interested in, for real. Uh, blood rituals? Child abuse? I mean, some of the worst stuff you've ever seen. Now, when Pizzagate came out in 20... There's that mention of Pizzagate, remember? It was made up then, and it's made up now. And here we are, 2023, and she's still repeating it. She is still spreading this nonsense to this day. It came out in 2016. A lot of associates of the Clintons shared very similar content on their social media pages. Dude, I don't even know what she's talking about. Shared similar content? Yeah, of course, they're politicians. Why wouldn't they share similar content? I share similar content with David Pakman, right? But doesn't mean like we're in some cabal together or some other... Like, what's she talking about right now? I encourage you to look into John and to Tony Podesta's art. Balenciaga, Pizzagate, the Podestas, it all ties together. I bet. Sure, sure. Absolutely. You know what? She forgot her tinfoil hat. I'm just now noticing. I'm not sure where that, that hat is that, that she should be wearing right now. Seems like that's the next logical step for her, right? Is a tinfoil hat? Absolutely absurd, dude. Absolutely absurd. And uh, here's where it gets interesting. I, I mean, you know, this is about the end, but I do want to point out that this event that she went to, this reawaken america tour where she talked about all this stuff this took place at none other than greg Locke's church he spoke at this event and he held this event at his church that should tell you all you need to know about greg Locke, full-blown q and honor anyway let me know what you think about this in the comments let me know if you want to see more stuff like this